One, two, three. Hey, John. Oh! Oh! What's going on? Brandon, I, I can't get these things off my fingers. Oh, you, you have to have fingers in both ends. Oh, well, I don't have any more fingers. I know someone who does. <sighs> I don't think this is how it works. Oh yeah, 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 do that. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and welcome to the So-and-So Show. Everyone's favorite show that takes you on a tour de force of laughs, <laughs> knowledge, and thought-provoking questions yes. about life and God. Yes siree, but before we get to any of that, I have got to get something to eat. I am famished. Did you not eat before the show? No. Why not? Well, I, I couldn't decide what I was hungry for. You got any ideas? Uh, I don't know, sushi rolls? No, 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 never say that. Oh, why? Why, is it, is it a raw sushi fish? Sushi roll, no, that's not the raw fish. It's just, what is it wrapped in? Oh, it's, I think it's like a seaweed. No, 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 I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Okay, fine. You, uh, I think so, there's some egg salad back there in the fridge. What is salad? What, what is salad about egg salad? You ask for a salad and they come back with a giant bowl of egg mush. What's even in it? Well, it's all things that you like. There's egg. No! There's mayo. No! What? No, 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 no. I don't want to know. Next. All right, fine. Uh, you want some cotton candy? <gasps> Why, Brandon? Why? It's not actual cotton. You wouldn't eat your shirt, right? You wouldn't eat your shirt. Mm -hmm. mm, that's so delicious. So good. I love cotton. Tastes like candy, said no one ever. Okay, yeah, but real cotton candy is delicious. I refuse to eat anything I don't understand. Okay, yeah, but every time I try to explain something to you, you say, I don't want to know. That don't sound like that. Yeah, look, how do you expect to understand if you won't listen to the answers to your questions? Fine, fine. You can try to teach me about cotton candy, but I'm not making any promises. Fair enough. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey, welcome to the show. Come on in, have yeah. a seat. Whoa, sorry. Here you go. Thanks for having me, John. You are welcome. This is, hey, hey, how did you know my name was John? I've watched the show before. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I really liked y'all's old stuff. Yeah, me too. So, uh, who are you and what do you know? Oh, my name is Sugar tilt whirl and I sell cotton candy with the Thomason Traveling Carnival. Oh, so you're like a cotton candy expert. <laughs> sure, why not? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and your actual name is, is Sugar? Who would make something like that up? I, uh, I... Can you tell us how cotton candy is made? I sure can. All right. How is cotton candy made? With a cotton candy maker. Fascinating. And uh, if you had a I've got one outside. Want me to bring it in? <laughs> Do I? Do you? He, he means yes. Well, then why didn't he just say yes? Uh, oh, he was just, I, I, I don't know. Okay. Hey, you with the hat, can you give me a hand? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure I can, and my name is John. I know, I watched the show, remember? 
Right. Yeah. You wearing a hat? Yeah. Can you give me a hand? Sure. Several minutes later. All right, so how does this work? I don't know. You don't. No, but I thought you I thought you sold cotton candy at the Thomason Traveling Carnival. How does that work? What my microphone? Yeah. I have no idea how it works, actually. I know you're not supposed to do that. Hey, uh, how do you make the cotton candy? Oh. Well, you pour the candy sugar into the head of the machine. It's basically just granulated sugar with food flavoring and coloring. This here is silly nilly. The machine heats it up to its melting point, which is about 190 degrees centigrade or 395 degrees Fahrenheit. This here is spinning at 500 RPMs. And with that level of centrifugal force, the liquefied sugar is expelled through small holes and it creates a fibrous material. And then you just roll it onto a paper cone. So that's how it works. I have no idea how it works. I thought we talked about that. Stop. Okay. Oh, well, that, that, that looks really good. <clears throat> yeah, it is. Did you, did you bring any? Any for you? No, I only brought one paper cone. Oh. But you can candy just about anything. Mmm, <laughs> mmm, mm. that is good. Mm. Yeah, thanks, sugar. Yeah. Are you talking to me or the cotton candy? You. You're welcome. Mm. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. We'll see you later, sugar. I mean, probably not. We're gonna be in Skokie this time tomorrow. It's a traveling carnival, not a stay in one place carnival. Those are basically just really sad amusement parks. Well, safe travels. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay. Do we have a key? <sighs> no. Oh, it tastes way better than the shirt. Ah, it's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey, Kellen! How's it going, fellas? Oh, just having a little tasty treat. Nice. You got a story for us today? I do, uh, but I can only find one so-and-so show player to help me tell it. Do you guys want to give me a hand? Yes, yes we do! do. Great. Today we're going to be using an oldie but a goodie, a flannel graph. This is how I learned Bible stories when I was a kid. Of course, our flannel graph, it's a little different. So, this guy right here is Philip. Philip was one of the earlier followers of Jesus. He sometimes called Philip the evangelist because he traveled all over telling people the good news of Jesus. So Philip was walking around one day when an angel spoke to him. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. <laughs> Philip, huh, whoa, oh, what's up angel? Go south to the desert road. Which one? Oh, you know the one that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Oh, that one. Thanks, Angel. No problem. Bye. And I'm walking, and I'm walking. So Philip went where the angel commanded.
And on the way, he met an official who worked for the queen of Ethiopia, traveling back from Jerusalem. And I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking, and I'm walking. Then Philip heard the Holy Spirit speaking to him. Huh. What's that? You want me to walk over to that chariot? Okay. And I'm walking to the, I'm here. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off, he did not open his mouth. What does that mean? Hello! Do you understand what you're reading? How can I? It's talking about sheep and wool. I need to, someone to explain it to me. Can you? I think I can help you. All right. Well, come over here and sit beside me on my chariot. Beside you? Okay. <laughs> A great <laughs> leap. Don't forget your glasses. <laughs> Right, watch my horse. Whoa, horsies! Ah. Ah. No reason. I'm just gonna squat down a little. All right. <laughs> I'm almost there. Yeah. I'm almost great. there. I can. There you go. Just push you around. There you go. Ah. That is amazing. Ah. Great ah. job. Easy peasy. The Ethiopian official was reading from what we call the Book of Isaiah. Many years before, God had shown Isaiah a vision of the future and he had written it down for all of God's people to read. Some of what he wrote was kind of hard to understand. That's why the official asked for help. Well, here we are on the back of this chariot. It's very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Get up, Bessie. <laughs> well, do you have any questions for me? Is Isaiah the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Is he the sheep led to be killed? Well, actually, Isaiah is talking about someone else who will come much later. Someone who will die as a sacrifice for all of our sins. Tell me, have you heard of the man Jesus? No. Oh, well, let me tell you all about him. Philip told the Ethiopian the good news, that God had planned for hundreds of years to send Jesus to pay for the sins of the world and that anyone who believes in him can be saved. So when they came to a body of water, Whoa, look, here's some water. What can stop me from being baptized? Nothing, let's go to the water. <laughs> Horses away! So Philip baptized the man right then and there. All right, are you ready for this? Yes, let's do it. Okay, here we go. <gasps> and after they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away. Whoa! Where is the spirit taking me? Whoa! Whoa! Impressive. <laughs> Backstroke. Backstroke. The end. Guys, thanks for your help. That was fun. Yes, it was. You know what? I loved how the official wasn't afraid to ask when he didn't understand something. I know. We shouldn't let things we don't understand keep us from doing what needs to be done. So it's good to ask questions. Yeah, and it's good to make yourself available to answer questions others might have, like, like Philip did. Truth. Great story, Kellen. Thanks for letting us play. Later. Later. You know, I have questions sometimes about life and about God. Me too. And I don't know that all of those questions will be answered, but I think it's important to ask. I have a question right now. Oh, well then reveal the question. All right, what questions do you have? I have so many. Like, what's the difference between indigo and midnight blue? Why do they call it a litter of kittens and kitty litter and they're two completely different things? Uh, maybe you have some questions. Why is abbreviation such a long questions word? Questions about life or, or God or really anything. What weighs more, the Chrysler Building or the Great Pyramid of Cheops? Talk about it together. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? We'll see you next time on... And what is a woodchuck? The so-and-so show. And why does it get bothered that it has a nickname? Doesn't it want to be called Charles? What are you gonna candy first, John? First thing is a shoe. Wait, is that mine? Yes. Scissors. That ah! doesn't work very well. It just didn't cut it.
get it. Order up. John's Keytar. What? No, 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 no. Stop.